And welcome to a brand new episode of I'm 40% Podcast with me, Jinx Monsoon, and my co host, the little shit himself, Nick Zahoya. Did you wash your hair today? I washed it last night. Thank you for asking. <laughs> it looked fluffier today. And <laughs> our very extra special guest is a dear friend of mine and one of the most beloved drag queens in the entire world. It's Latrice Royale. Latrice, do you hate being introduced that way? No! <laughs> you gotta educate the children and let them know, honey. <laughs> I, I, would, I would worry that it would put so much pressure on you to be lovable. I mean, it comes naturally <laughs> to you, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I give what I get, and so if you want, you know what I mean. I treat yeah. people how they they want to be treated. I assume that that's what how everybody works, right? You treat people how you want to be treated. Well, so you give love, you get love. Not everybody was raised right, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. But it's so good to see you, Jinxie, even it's, though it's virtual. It's nice to see you, too. It's almost like being in the real space, you know? <laughs> Having the headphones on, hearing your voice directly into my ears isn't any different from when we're in person I mean, with each other. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it goes both ways. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> Latrice, today we are reviewing season two, episode six of Futurama, Branigan, Begin Again. Now, I have to start by asking, are you a Futurama fan? Have you watched it before? Do you watch it regularly? I have watched it regularly, like back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so it had been a while since I had like revisited it, so... Uh, yeah, it was cute. We kiki, I laughed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you and Christopher watch it together? We did actually, because uh -huh. um, yeah, he he's a you know he's a connoisseur of the Futurama. <laughs> I kept wondering why the captain didn't have no pants on, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> Latrice, uh, before we get into this episode, as someone who has seen uh, a bit of Futurama before, do you have a favorite episode or a favorite memory, favorite character? No, I just, I just, I love, um, I forget her name the, with the one I, but I love her because of, <laughs> you know, Peg Bundy, you know, I was just like, yeah. but it's Peg! <laughs> <laughs> but um no i i it's funny all the way around i just forget and then when you're high on top of that it's just stupid just well, now this is do, interesting do so you, you smoke weed you smoke while you weed? while you watch oh cartoons my God. this is really I weird i mean who does that <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the number two thing people know about Latrice. It's number one is she's lovable. Number two is she's stoned. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> and if you don't know that, get from under that rock, really. Or stop smoking it, whatever. Whichever you want. <laughs> I love that we have your background is you in full drag. So we've got you kind of off to the, like... <laughs> Like a yeah, I'm trying to be off to the side. So <laughs> I try to, you know, give the illusion of what the illusion would be. <laughs> well, let's let's start at the top. Um, the cold open is them playing chess, correct, Nick? Nick is our historian it's, on the episodes. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's like a Star Wars chess. It's a parody of the hologram Star Wars chess, and it's only slightly more violent than actual Star Wars chess. <laughs> slightly, slightly. Um, but are they playing it on a dartboard? Is that like chess well, boards the of the shape. future? <laughs> I don't I don't know where you're at with Star Wars, Latrice, but Jinx has never seen a Star Wars, so she doesn't realize that this is a direct parody of the Star oh. Wars. I would have gotten Wait. it if it was a direct parody of Harry Potter. <laughs> and, wow. and and Bender was like, 
It's you who has to finish the game, Fry. <laughs> not me, not Leela, you. <laughs> <laughs> and Latrice. that completes her entire British <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Latrice, all... based on your reaction, it seems like you have seen Star Wars. Do you enjoy it? I mean, I have. I do watch Star I have seen Star Wars, at least. I just can't believe she... you haven't, Jinx. I like... haven't needed to. It's, I'm so inund- <laughs> in- inundated by it um, in our culture that I, I haven't ever needed to watch any of the movies to know what happened. <laughs> well, that now you got a point. That part. <laughs> we did do an episode of we did do an episode of Cool Bob where she guessed which what each movie was about and she got like 80% of it right. So having, I can't. having never she's seen a cool it. Mom. Yeah. I, I keep up with the the goings ons. <laughs> You're so hip. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We get into uh, the opening credits here. The little tagline at the beginning is not Y3K compliant. Um, Do y'all remember the Y2K uh, hysteria? Oh, so there was a Y3K? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's weird because Y2K didn't end up doing anything, but apparently Y3K is something we should be worried about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I remember being worried about it, but I also was a teenager, so I didn't necessarily see how it was going to affect my life, you know, overall. But Latrice, <laughs> you were a full-blown adult at the time. Um, not full-blown. <laughs> not wow. full-blown, girl. Like, wow, not shots full fired. Blown, girl. <laughs> <laughs> were, were, were you terrified? Damn. Were you terrified? No, of I thought it was. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> Everybody's freaking out. They're like, "Oh, our computers are not gonna work. Everything's gonna shut down. The world's gonna shut down." No, bitch. We're gonna show you. <laughs> we're gonna show you Y two K in twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty, bitch. That's that's the Y two K that you be scared of. Yeah, I just no, never that understood was nothing. It. The whole problem was that the computer was going to think it was 1900 and not the year 2000. But, like, but why would that make why anything would the bad happen? That? Right. It was going to be like... a paradox because the computer was going to be like, I did not exist yet. How am I being here? <laughs> crazy. So. People are crazy. But they were, yeah. like, talking about it like your oven was going to do that. And, yeah, like, your everything clock. was going like... to. <laughs> I could yeah. see the computers maybe like because they're like they're verging on sentience, you know. But like they were talking about how your like a calculator was going to stop working. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like what? <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. Like stupid. <laughs> um, wow. I enter the office, <laughs> or do you want to say something? About- I was just going to say. I wonder if in Futurama with Y three K. They were worried that the like robots were gonna start acting like Amish people or something. Oh, <laughs> you know, like... That's a good episode. That's a good spec <laughs> script that you should write. Jace. Thank you, thank you. Okay, take us on. Uh, we enter the office. They're watching cartoons, uh, which is meta, and they're <laughs> mad that they have to do a delivery to Dupe, the Democratic Order of Planets, which is, uh, as Hermes explains, like the UN. Fry says, huh? And then he says, or like the Federation and your Star Trek programs. And he says, ah, yes. Yeah. I mean, they really do comment on the audience watching um, the TV show. Because first there's the joke about how they can't do work because they're sitting around watching cartoons. Um, (laughs) They hadn't realized that one day people would be combining watching cartoons with their work. (laughs) Right. Who knew? You did. This qu- and this does qualify as work, if my if my mom asks. But trust me, it stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like watching a cartoon. Like, what am I gonna say about this part? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I was worried I didn't take good enough notes for this one. I was like, I didn't write down enough about this episode of a cartoon I've seen at least ten times. <laughs> well, it's hard. oh, you're like a fan like that, y'all. Like, do you watch this often? Like, like. Like like that? Like the, that? This podcast um, was born out of Nick and I having entire conversations in, in Futurama quotes. So, Oh, <laughs> and, wow. I think while we lived together, we probably watched the whole season twice. And we only lived together for two years. And Jinx was on tour for about, I don't know, 85% of it. 
<laughs> wow. Well, I don't know if they're a sponsor of this podcast or not, but there's this place y'all can both go. It's called Better Help. And um, <laughs> you really should talk to somebody about this. This is. <laughs> I can't Crazy. take on another therapist. My schedule is, <laughs> is full of this. I don't know, Jinx. You can, you can maybe use one more. Let's just try try it from every angle. <laughs> it's the trifecta. That's what's been mes- missing. Um, I I think the reason why you didn't take as many notes is because this is a Zap Brannigan episode, and I just my brain turns to mush on Zap Brannigan episodes. I'm just so against the patriarchy that I can't (laughs) even watch a satirical episode. (laughs) I think Zap is a very funny character. Jinx, I think, just can't get past the reality, like the real Zaps of the world. Like, it upsets her too much. they're real. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. Uh, Where did you fall on on Zap in general? Wear your pants. (laughs) (laughs) You have no bottoms on. I mean, <laughs> what's going? What's going on? Well, Zap little... is not attractive, but can you imagine how nice it would be going to work and all your attractive coworkers are wearing those little tiny skirts? That'd be nice. Wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> if that's the custom of the future and no, they're choosing to wear it, I think what we're seeing now is you know with the green M M&M and M and Minnie Mouse. Oh my God, I, can't. I think what we're seeing is that. If Futurama were rebooted again, Zap Brannigan would be wearing a sensible pencil skirt. (laughs) Something knee length. At least, yes. Um, so, okay, so they have to deliver the giant scissors because that's what every ribbon cutting ceremony needs. Such a stupid joke, but I love it when, um, Leela says, we'll get them there as fast as we can. And the professor says, okay, but don't run with them. (laughs) (laughs) It's very inconsistent because the professor does not care about their safety or whether they make it back from any mission alive. But when it comes to giant scissors, you know, we're all programmed to know what to say when there's a pair of scissors around. (laughs) (laughs) We should mention they're like um, child safety scissors, though. They have the kind of like rounded edge, you know, like in kindergarten (laughs) when you're cutting construction paper. It doesn't feel very (laughs) ceremonious, to say the least. (laughs) Yeah, they're not even gold. They're just very normal looking scissors. No sparkle. <laughs> no. You can't even get a stone on that pair of scissors. You better rhinestone those. It's like when girls on drag race walk down the runway and they have not rhinestoned their prop, you know? Like, cover what it. is that? Just cover flat. it in rhinestones, girl. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> we get to the dupe. Uh, Tress McNeil is voicing the head of the dupe. I like this character a lot. She says that uh, the dupe has uh, achieved all these things, including brokering peace between the insectoids and the space lizards. Meanwhile, a space lizard has uh, insectoid all the way in his mouth and <laughs> has to take him out and shake his hand <laughs> to keep up appearances. <laughs> uh, <laughs> As um, they do. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, they fostered peace between these two <laughs> species. Um I, I don't know. Uh, th- what I'm going to start by saying is I often wonder how <coughs> Zap Brannigan has managed to rise to the rank of like a celebrated, decorated captain. And then we learn about the dupe in this episode. And I'm like, oh, everyone's incompetent from <laughs> from the floor up. There's like, this is all a facade. They're performing. Uh, it's very performative. But... I don't see any real, like, peace fostering happening here. Um, We get our first uh, introduction to the Amazonians, because Fry is hitting on one of the Amazonians (laughs) by the the craft service table. (laughs) And um, she, she only has one line here, but we get a whole episode with the Amazonians later, and it's one of the best. It's it's a good foreshadowing. What does Fry say when they enter the dupe? He's like, um, I haven't seen anything as spectacular as this in my whole life. Oh, look, a table with muffins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, muffins. Me. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite kind of muffin, Latrice? I like poppy Ooh. seed. 
See, then you test positive for for THC, you know, mm-hmm. for opium, um, <laughs> for opium. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll test positive it, for THC it, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love a good banana nut muffin. I do. I um, but I I, I had to I have to lay off the muffins because I already <laughs> have too much of a muffin top. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was preferred muffin. <laughs> um, like lemon. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why, of course? Do I strike you as, as a a tart? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. She saved it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, they they're having the ceremony in orbit of the neutral planet of Neutronia. Or I think it's just called the neutral planet. The neutral planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the neutrals. They're very funny. <laughs> they are very funny. Um, they have no strong feelings either way about anything, um, which begs the question why Zap Brannigan is so suspicious of them. Except he does explain, <laughs> with enemies, you know where you stand, but with these neutrals... <laughs> like... <laughs> point, though. There's a point to be made there. <laughs> so he's inherently distu- distrustful of the neutral planet and thinks this is all some sort of neutral scheme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he and he uh, apprehends Leela because he thinks that she's working with the neutrals, but it seems like a ruse just to like get her alone on his ship, which is creepy. Um, the dupe uh, head of what do you call her? The head of the dupe. The high, the grand high dupe. The high, I don't know. The high dupe. The, the, the high dupe dress. <laughs> the du- high dress. <laughs> um, uh, she says that uh, Zap has just returned from a triumphant carpet bobbing of Eden Seven, <laughs> and um, he's supposed to be the one cutting the ribbon, but he's busy interrogating Leela on his ship. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely Ridiculous. just w- the thing is, is like yes. Zap Brannigan will use any excuse to to be close to Leela and keep Leela um, in his thrall, but he does actually seem upset. Like, he seems genuinely concerned, but that's more about his stupidity and his distrust of the neutral planet than, like, it, it seems less like a ruse here because he's just so worked up about this fictitious <laughs> conspiracy he's invented. <laughs> but um, he does find a way to do both things at once when he decides to cut the mm, mm, <laughs> cut the mm, ribbon mm, with the ship's laser. This is a bad laser. idea. This is a bad <laughs> idea all around. You had two other settings you could have put it on. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> is referring to there's a lever on the laser that says stun, and he pushes it past that past kill all the way to hyper death. Which is, <laughs> like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Put some ribbon. Okay, all right. Yeah. Ribbon. That seems logical to me. Oh, <laughs> it, it, that just reminded me of one of my favorite lines where he was like, <laughs> Leela points out that they're safety scissors and they're not even sharp. And he says, well, maybe you plan to attack the, the yarn people of... <laughs> Nylar. Wow. <laughs> and then we get a little clip of the yarn people just sitting there going. <laughs> um, they talk like Animal Crossing villagers. This is this is my favorite thing about an animated show set in the future is that they can make up that there's yarn people and then there's yarn people. Like you know, there's <laughs> there's no rules, there's no limits. The limits are whatever the. Um, Korean sweatshops can manage to illustrate in time. <laughs> or was this before they were using, was this before they were outsourcing animation? I, or I don't they... know enough about this to speak on <laughs> Me neither. I shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> I'm trying to sound like I keep up to date, but I mean, I know there's something going on with animation. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Dupe headquarters explodes. We cut back to Earth, where we're at the old Dupe headquarters, which is a decrepit building in New Jersey. Uh, Zap is on trial, and he is being represented by the country hyper chicken, which Jinx no, stole. No, he's being prosecuted by the country hyper chicken. No, he's oh. not. He is being represented because he does a bad job, and that's why the cases, the charges are dismissed. 
Oh, wow. Well, I thought she called. I thought the Stop dupe- trying to dodge the question. Why the did you steal just... this character? Why did this you steal this character on stolen. season five of Drag Race? <laughs> this character is stolen to begin with from Foghorn Leghorn. You were playing Leghorn. a country lawyer. Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn is not a lawyer. This character is. You were playing a lawyer. I say, I say, I, I make the difference though. <laughs> Oh my god, a drag queen used a reference from something to develop a not entirely unique character. Stop the presses, everybody. Drag queens can't think of everything on their own. <laughs> it was a good character. I will say, when, I, when I'm giving drag queens advice on how to be funny or what to do for their drag race audition tapes, I'm just like, steal that impression from SNL. <laughs> You're wearing a wig. You're allowed to steal a little bit. <laughs> um, so yes, I love that the the <laughs> the chicken decides to put the entire jury on trial, but the jury is all people who were in the explosion. So right, and they all have like bandages still. <laughs> They're all still injured from it. <laughs> um, nothing about this trial is going by the books. Uh, the mm-hmm. dupetress is not a good she's a, judge. No, she's allowed <laughs> everything. It's she a allows shit job. everything. I'm going to allow this. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Your Honor, I know that the trial is over and you've already made your decision, but I'd like to testify. I'm going to allow uh, this. I'm going to allow it. <laughs> <laughs> So based on Leela's one emphatic testimony, um, the the judge, the duptress, decides to overturn her initial ruling, which is to let Zap go scot-free. And she now decides uh, that she, he's stripped of his rank as captain and he is exiled from the dupe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we should mention the four person of the jury is Glermo from <laughs> the Willy Wonka parody episode. <laughs> because all sins are forgiven. Slurm is, <laughs> Slurm is doing better than ever. Well, uh, Slurm, they probably have representation in the dupe. Every planet does. <laughs> I um I love. I'm that... more confused. Like, why? What is Glermo's job? Because he seems busy. <laughs> He's an ambassador. He's a spokesperson. <laughs> okay, I buy it. Um, I love that. Uh, Zap tells Kiff to lift up the flag behind him while he gives his <laughs> exit speech. And I don't wave even... it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wave and it a little. <laughs> wave it around for God's sake. Um, <laughs> I don't remember the speech he gives because I was too busy laughing at Kiff having to hold up that flag. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you need to look at the glasses half full on this. Every Zap Brannigan episode is also a Kiff episode, and we love Kiff. He's very funny. We love Kiff. <clears throat> um, so Zap gets Kiff thrown out of the dupe, too. Oh, yeah. And Just the two of them. Shady. <laughs> Captain goes down with the ship. I mean, damn. <laughs> oh, I kind of glo- we glossed over Zap's defense for himself. Um, where he oh, cross examines yeah. Leela and just gets her to admit that she had sex with him. <laughs> ah, uh, that part. <laughs> what was the name of the person you had sex with? Zap Brannigan. The very same Bra- Zap Brannigan who did not blow up the- <laughs> his entire case. So they're kicked out. They're civilians now. Um, Zap and Kiff, what are they going to do? They become get some pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, yeah. He does immediately get pants. That's his first action. <laughs> yeah, that's his that's his captain's skirt. He doesn't feel like he's allowed to wear it as a civilian. Now, this this whole scene of them becoming um What do you think it is, Jinx? I want you to guess. What is this a parody? It's of? obviously a reference to something, a parody. Is it my own private Idaho? No. <laughs> that's okay, then I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't even seen the movie, but I believe it's a parody of Midnight Cowboy, which was a Best Picture nominee with Dustin Hoffman or something about male prostitutes. Male sex oh. workers, excuse me. I wouldn't have seen okay. it for the sole reason that it has cowboy in the title. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to watch a movie about some gigolos trying to make a buck? Doesn't I'll, that seem fun? I'll, I'll watch a movie about gigolos, but do they... Do they um, you I know. think his gimmick is he dresses up as a cowboy, and that's why it cuts to Zap 
Okay, but dressed does, as a cowboy, but leaning ever, up against a mailbox. Does he ever do gay stuff, or is this some kind of it's like a gay? He's a gay prostitute. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll Brokeback check it out. Mountain. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's Brokeback Mountain is what it's a parody of. Um, I was like, if it's an hour of watching Dustin Hoffman bang women, I'll I'll sit out. <laughs> I believe. Maybe he has sex with women, too. I've never seen the movie. If you're listening at home and you've seen the movie Midnight Cowboy, we're never going to watch it. So send us an email. I'm going to check it out, actually. I'm intrigued. <laughs> you might be good. Some... Yeah, I'll Is let you know. dressed as Tootsie during the film? Oh, that's yeah, that the important hot. thing. That, that's hot. If the it was Dustin a... Hoffman cinematic universe where he plays all the characters. If it was a movie about Tootsie becoming a prostitute, banging whoever i'd watch it even though i hate the movie tootsie i'd like this i'd like this crossover <laughs> you like the cross dressing yeah <laughs> and then captain hook comes in <laughs> uh, zap is trying to sell his body on the street the kajigger lady right. pulls up in a limo she right, has limo this. money apparently <laughs> and uh she doesn't want to sleep with zap she wants to sleep with kiff and Kiff is sad about it, but does it. <laughs> you know, you Get bring you up a piece, Kiff. <laughs> you, <laughs> you bring up a good point that, like, um, uh, at different points throughout the series, the Kajigger lady, who <laughs> seems like she's completely unhinged, apparently has a lot of money to leave to her cats. She's also one of the key investors in Planet Express. So maybe she has limo money and still chooses to dress in a house dress and <laughs> and cardigan. Um yeah, maybe the money was left to her or it's like a family fortune and she just never learned to take care of herself. Maybe she's happy with how how she is, yeah. you know. Keeping a low profile. Not everyone <laughs> not everyone who um comes into money has to be pushed through the the Hollywood lens of beauty, you know. Look at me. You. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going to say Carol Baskin, but she's been through enough. I'm going to leave her out of oh, this. Geez. Um, so actually, kudos kudos to that lady for um, for sticking to what works for her. Carol Baskin, you mean? <laughs> both. Both of them. <laughs> um, so they don't have a job. They decide to go to Planet mm-hmm. Express and beg for a job. Um uh, Zap says, perhaps I could paint a fence or service you sexually or mop the floors. And Leela <laughs> says, you don't know how to do any of those things, which I thought was fun. Yeah, he's not very good in bed. We learned that. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> um, Latrice, um, Jinx has fucked many a Zap in her life. Wow. Have I don't you ever- say many. <laughs> Oh, a wow. handful. Okay. <laughs> uh, have you ever had a Zap Brannigan in your love life? And how long did he stick around before you gave him the nah, uh, uh, no Well, it was not. Uh, no, it was a hookup gone wrong. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of those brief encounters of the worst kind, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and no, he did not stick around. <laughs> um, he actually was, he had to meet his clothes downstairs because I threw him over the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So, wow. Yeah, I told you, do not, whatever you do, do not get jizz in my hair because at that time I had hair <laughs> <laughs> so Latrice got to have her Taylor Swift moment throwing all the clothes over the balcony. I totally did. <laughs> um, yeah, the no, per- I, I ha- I've slept with a few zaps. I dated one for like nine months. <laughs> Damn, you stuck with it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna out anyone as a Zap Can Brannigan. Can we bleep it? <laughs> no. If you thought for a half a second who I might be talking about, you'd know. I have. Well, I have a couple. <laughs> Damn. Okay. We're moving Damn. on. We're moving on. <laughs> Uh, the professor walks in and decides it's a good idea to hire Zap because he's a disgraced star captain and that will distract <laughs> from his many safety violations. So all of a sudden, Zap works at Planet Express along with Kiff. 
Um, there's an office meeting. Uh, the professor's talking to Hermes, and he says, which one of these is the new employees? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this senile-ass, old-ass <laughs> professor, man. I'm like, how is he in charge of anything? Like, he does not even know what time it is right now. <laughs> He has moments of lucidity, though. This is him. Uh, I would say. I think. I think his senility comes and goes. Yeah. Because he doesn't Shady remember Pines, that Bender Ma. works there. Is... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, he's also like uh, his age is in question. He's anywhere between 150 and 200 years old. So <laughs> at least <laughs> I, I've got to um, beg to differ with you that on Jinx because there's the episode where they say. When you're like a, I don't know the exact number. When you're 119, they take you away to the senior citizen planet. Yeah, but then there's the there's the the episode of the the tar pit of aging, the fountain of the fountain of aging. Anyway, we'll get into it in due time. The point is, <laughs> Professor, he's not reliable. We can end it on At that. All. <laughs> At but all. of all the people he doesn't recognize, it's Bender. <laughs> I've never seen that robot before. I'm the lovable scamp. I'm the lovable rascal. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, my good friend. And then he shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> he so, gets back to it. He tells them that they have a delivery to Stumbos 4. It's a planet <laughs> with very high gravity where they will likely be crushed by the oh, weight of their own hair. Oh, my God. <laughs> you well, drag queens would be in trouble on a planet like this. Oh, I, I would never, I could never wear one of my big pieces there. No. <laughs> this There's is my no up dues. You gotta go bus driver. <laughs> my first Monday thought exchange. was... Uh, <laughs> My first thought was, how could a drag show ever happen on this planet? Because you see drag queens, even <coughs> tiny drag queens, even <coughs> tiny, tiny drag queens stomping around on these stages, watching these, like, watching these cobbled together stages, rocking back and forth. Think of a brunch stage. Those, those are that <laughs> platforms. <laughs> One time, Minute. um... One time I was in the Castro at Honey Mahogany show and I was on mushrooms and uh, I was I was in the back talking to Honey and all of a sudden we heard a big crash behind us and the stage had collapsed. Oh, I wish I remembered I wish I remembered the name of the girl because she literally got up and kept doing the number and everyone cheered. <laughs> But I was on mushrooms. I was on mushrooms, so I was like convinced that I had made the stage collapse. (laughs) (laughs) I felt really guilty. Um, Damn. Some of the stages, my God, I know this is a departure from the episode, but um, Latrice, have you performed at that place where your stage is just a line of speakers? <laughs> just a line of <laughs> yeah. giant speakers that I you came have to up, walk com- across? Yeah, I have I come up in those kind of stages, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Um, so anyway, Stumbo's Four is no place for a drag show. I also have to ask: Are there three other? Are there three other Stumboses? Like, are there just like Ooh, a series question. of planets with really high gravity? Um, <laughs> is this well, the fourth one of its kind, or is four uh, uh, some other kind of space indicator? <laughs> is four is the guy who discovered it named Stumbos, and this is just <laughs> happens to be the fourth planet he discovered, or is it like the fourth planet in this system? I don't know. I don't know how naming planets works, but in the Futurama <laughs> universe, it's going to be some kind of pun. And then a number. <laughs> uh, on the flight to Stumbos, Zap is down below ship with uh, Fry and Bender, and he's sort of co-opting the Communist Manifesto in order to <laughs> ingratiate himself <laughs> with the crew. Um, he says, he 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 cheers. He takes out a beer. He he does a toast. He says. Here's to working for the man, even if he is a hot, sexy female man. <laughs> and Jinx, uh, Jinx, your grinder profile says hot, sexy female man, right? That's that's pretty much the gist of it, yeah. Um, <laughs> I also love that Zap, you know, first asks if she ever, if Leela ever gives disciplinary spankings. And they all say no. And he says, well, if she does institute any sort of bare bottom. Bare bottom. (laughs) Spanking. uh, 
<laughs> I'll take them for the team. Um, you know, ha, ha, have either of you ever been into spanking? Mm, I've been the spanker, not the spanky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I've think never in been general, the spanker. <laughs> I think in general, I'm into a normal amount of hitting during sex. <laughs> yeah, when it happens organically. Some I... open-handed hitting during sex Wait, is fine. wait, what? What do you mean open-handed <laughs> organically? What are you, what are you <laughs> into? <laughs> you're, tell- you're telling me a little slappy slappy doesn't just happen organically? Uh. <laughs> um... I I will say that I have explored, you know, just spanking, like just being spanked, and that's as far as it went. And like the 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 activity on the docket that night was just spanking. And I'm not generally into the whole pain for pleasure thing, but I do enjoy being spanked. I I, I can I can sit over a person's knee and be spanked a little bit, but I do have a point where I'm like, all right, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good on that. that. <laughs> well, it's my a- question then now is, was it bare bottom spankings? I think mm-hmm. we got there. I think eventually. First, you have to pull the underwear up. In the crack, <laughs> you oh, know, no. give you a wedgie, <laughs> give you a wedgie, oh, okay. and a spanking. All, all right, don't pretend you haven't seen that in your in your go to porn. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a little jock strap action, you know, a little <laughs> pull on the g string, yeah. And this is why this is the queer Futurama uh, review <laughs> podcast <laughs> because we've now spent about five minutes talking about spanking. Nick, take us back to the the set course. <laughs> <laughs> Above deck in the captain's quarters, Leela is flying the ship. Kiff is there talking to her and uh, does something to help. And she says, thank you, Kiff. Good job. And this causes uh, Kiff to basically have a mental Aww, breakdown. Because no one has far. ever been nice to him. No one's ever been nice to him. <laughs> he was like, this is the happiest day of my life. <laughs> like, that is sad. <laughs> well, I mean, he was born in a in a puddle of goo and grew up in a swamp and then became a lackey to an idiot. So I can't imagine. I mean, Kiff is clearly a trauma survivor and, (laughs) and Leela is his savior. So it's natural that he's going to form an intense bond with her. Um, But it kind of throughout this, episode you see how much he uh how codependent he becomes on Leela and you have to wonder <laughs> did Kiff kind of enable his current situation in life uh, I don't know I don't want to speculate but I, I think I, he's like a, a a power sub like he really just needs <laughs> someone to <laughs> tell him what to do <laughs> everything um, is so sexual with y'all. No, Latrice, <laughs> what are you talking about? I think, I think what we can yeah. surmise is that Kiff and Zap's <laughs> relationship is just um, toxic on all levels. You know, I mean, uh, Zap is clearly the abuser, but like, um, I don't know. I don't know that we can um, victim blame Kiff at all, but clearly something's not working there and they should seek couples counseling. <laughs> I, I think um, the lesson is hurt people hurt people. Um, um, yeah. They it. land on Stumbo Spore <laughs> and their job is to deliver a bunch of pillows to like what? A, a hotel? A hotel. Yeah. <laughs> now I it understand. seems like easy enough, right? Yeah. Easy enough. But not once once they leave the ship, the anti gravity pump will not make the pillows their normal weight anymore. They will be very heavy, so they have to deliver them on a hover dolly one at a time. My question is, why didn't they land closer to the hotel? There's, that part. <laughs> there's that. Um, they immediately try to put all the pillows on at once, um, not heeding any of Leela's very of explicit warnings. And then Zap Brannigan's girdle bursts immediately, which is point, <laughs> point two for why drag shows can't happen on Stubbo's floor. Uh, 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 uh. You don't want all that loose. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the dolly breaks immediately. Leela comes down and scolds them. And um, Fry says, we'll just use the backup dolly. 
And Bender says, I'll start loading up the pillows. <laughs> They're just going <laughs> to no do lessons. it again. Just do no it again. lessons have been learned. Um, um, she punishes them by saying, well, no, no. Now you have to deliver them by hand. Yeah. Which um, I have to, I mean, like, even if the pillows weigh 150 pounds, Bender... <laughs> right. <laughs> Bender has lifted like school buses before, <laughs> but suddenly now the pillow is too heavy. But this is all it takes for Zap to have his in um, to incite a mutiny amongst this two person crew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it would be easier to make a mutiny happen with a smaller crew. You only need to rally two votes. Two instead people, of, that's it. Yeah. And that's the majority. That's all you got. And one of them's an idiot, and one of, one of them's a self-obsessed robot. So uh, it's it's one of the easiest mutinies I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> I think the turning point for uh, Bender and Fry was when he said that if I were captain, you could sit around drinking beer in your underpants. And that really and seemed to... Like, that Sold. resonated with them. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, I I would be fine with an underpants rule myself. I mean, if everyone <laughs> on the crew also was cool with an underpants rule, you know, yeah, I casual mean, we, Fridays. We know how Latrice feels about not wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> as for me, in general, as captain, I would be fine with casual Fridays, which are just underpant Fridays. Well, when we lived together, Jigs, almost everyone was always walking around in their underwear. Not me. I always had some kind of schmata on. Well, you're the I always captain. had some kind of house dress. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, they mutiny. I love that it cuts to Kiff saying, but now I don't have to worry about that because Zap's not captain anymore. I'm free. I'm finally free. <laughs> this is a mutiny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, Zap orders to throw the old captain Leela into the brig they say we don't have a brig he says we'll then throw her in the laundry room which will henceforth be known as the brig <laughs> <laughs> and then when Kiff says what do you want me to do with your civilian clothes he says throw it in the laundry brig <laughs> 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 um so we get to the heart of the issues. You know, there are just toxic relationships all through. I know I know it's kind of pointless to try to analyze the relationships of these cartoon characters that were written as archetypes. I, of course, feel for Kif, even though I think Kif has to do some work on Kif's self. Um, but the heart of this episode is the working relationship between um, Leela and her crew. And they point out that Leela is just too much of a nag for them. <laughs> and she essentially, you know, like she acknowledges that maybe she's hard on them, but she's pretty much just doing that to keep them alive. You know, L I think Leela's number one job as captain is just to keep Fry and Bender from getting killed by their own stupidity, uh, which I don't think Leela deserves that. But she's a good person for stepping up to that plate. <laughs> I can relate to this because I play, uh, occasionally I play a video game called Sea of Thieves where you're pirates on a ship together <laughs> and my friends will be on there and I will have to snap at them to go like repair the ship. And that's just what you have to do when you're captain. Someone's got to take charge. Can't worry about being mm. nice when we're getting shot at by krakens and whatnot. Krakens. I guess under extenuating circumstances, all etiquette flies out the window. But Nick is also a Scorpio, so he's just going to <laughs> boss people around no matter what the situation is. So. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Patrice, what is your sign? I'm an Aquarius. Oh. My birthday is happening next week. Oh, happy, happy birthday. early birthday. Ah, It'll 50. be late birthday by the time our listeners hear this. So <laughs> send her late birthday. What do you want in your DMs? You want nudes? <laughs> yes, please. Send nudes, <laughs> dick pics, all that. Um, I'm 50. I'm not dead. Yeah. <laughs> do you have anything special planned? 50 is a pretty significant milestone. I'm going to Vegas, baby. <laughs> We're going to Vegas. Yes, I'm going to spend a week in Vegas and just turn up and turn out. What do y'all like to do in Vegas? Is Christopher dragging you to 
piano shows and <laughs> Liberace concerts. <laughs> no, not quite. We're probably going to go see the the girls, the dames on the oh, uh, RuPaul's Drag. Yeah, I haven't seen that show yet. Yeah. Um, so I'll go make fun of them. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Will it be one of those situations where you dress nice because you know you're going to get pulled up on stage, but and you know the whole time you're going to get pulled up on stage, but when they're pulling you up, you're like, ladies, nah, nah, I'm just here, <laughs> no, no, I'm just I'm here, here to watch. See you. I'm just here. It's not about me tonight. Oh, all. okay. Yeah. Twist my uh, arm, black okay. me. Right. <laughs> That part. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Um, Now that Zap is in charge, he uh, decides to return to his original vendetta of destroying the neutral planet because he thinks that it will make Dupe reinstate him as captain or whatever. Um, He's really got a vendetta for that neutral planet. Those poor <laughs> neutrals. They're, they're just minding their own business, doing all literally business, doing nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Fry sort of in a hilarious way points out the brutality of this plan by saying, we're going to be like, pew, 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 and all the people are going to be like, ah, ah. and then we're going <laughs> to celebrate after, and I'm going to eat pancakes and go like, nom, nom, nom. nom. <laughs> And when he makes the pancake noise, I got physically ill. I think eating sounds are very gross. I got hungry for pancakes. I'm proud to say that we will never, we will never eat on this podcast. We will not do it because that's a gross sound. Latrice, you're how do you feel? The, you no, you're not into like the ASMR of it I all. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Do you like it, Latrice? Pickles on. Um, <laughs> I love to hear a good crunch of something's crunchy. <laughs> Here you are shaming us for spanking, and you, you're into the freaky pickle eating video. <laughs> She's watching Trisha Paytas eating pickles, shaming us for spanking. <laughs> uh, okay, so they they're gonna attack the neutral planet once again. Um, he doesn't have. Oh, it's essentially a suicide mission, like all of yeah. Zaps. All of Zaps. Basically, I mean, it's kind of nine eleven y if if we're being honest. <laughs> wow, it is. It's really dark. <laughs> we're gonna have to put a trigger warning on this episode. <laughs> we're gonna have to put a trigger warning on this whole podcast feed. I think <laughs> this show goes to very dark places. Uh. <laughs> um, I love that there's only the one spacesuit, which, uh, w- w- first of all, why was there only Bad one planning. space yeah. s- suit to begin with? <laughs> there's three people on the crew, occasionally Zoidberg and Amy, so. Um, and then as soon as they need it, there's a second spacesuit. It's a kid's size spacesuit that fits Kiff perfectly. They've never had a kid on that <laughs> ship, not one. <laughs> <laughs> um... And they I send love... a message. Oh, go ahead, mom. I was just gonna love. Uh, I was just gonna say I love that. Like Kiff is gonna stay with the crew um, because he prefers Leela as captain. Um, but Leela, in one day, is already sick of Kiff's <laughs> neediness. I just now I, I you know earlier I was trying to see both sides, but now I'm just like my heart's breaking for Kiff. I'm a Virgo, so I, I feel really bad for ever implying that Kiff maybe brought this abuse on himself. Kiff is a saint and deserves none of this. <laughs> um, they send a message of peace and they fly the white flag of war. The neutral president uh, the neutral pl- president gets the message and his advisor in the Oval Office is like, should we trust them, your neutralness? And he says, all I know is my gut says maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's my favorite running gag, because right after this, he says, when it seems like they're all going to die, he says, if I don't survive, tell my wife I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the last minute, as we could have guessed, Leela saves everything and everyone, um, proving why she is... The best captain for Planet She's the best Express. <laughs> She's a very good captain. She even handed. I feel like if she wasn't a woman, they wouldn't even think she's a nag. So let's talk about that. Yeah, it's it all goes back to misogyny. You know, Zap can be a, <laughs> Zap can be a complete incompetent idiot um, and remain like one of the highest military officers in the world. <laughs> 
Leela just tries to get them to do their job and she gets mutinied. <laughs> um, eventually we get back to the dupe headquarters. Oh wait, can I say one line we missed? <laughs> yes. <laughs> when they're about to crash and they have to divert the power to the left engine or whatever. Um, Leela says, <laughs> hurry, I don't want to die at 25. And Bender, in a very untucked <laughs> moment, says, honey, unless we hit a time warp, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> very catty. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> they, they have to, uh, yeah, they use the hover dolly. Thank God the other hover dolly wasn't broken because they needed to, um, move the black, the, the, the dark matter. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> so in the end, Leela saves everything and we get back to the dupe headquarters and they're like considering, they're reconsidering Zap's uh, uh, punishment. I don't know why when he, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe There's they're no opening the evidence. book again because he almost declared war on the neutral planet again. And they're <laughs> like, we need to further punish this person. But Leela realizes, um, thanks to the professor that if Zap is cleared of, uh, if Zap isn't cleared of his charges, he can remain their captain. So Leela does a complete 180 and says, your, your dupeness, your, your honor, everything Zap said is true. The crazy stuff, the stuff that doesn't make any sense, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> So, in the end of the episode, everything goes back exactly the way it was before. Um, <laughs> Zap is now a head of Earth's military once more, and Leela is captain of Planet Express. But having learned a new lesson of maybe um, cutting her crew some slack. Um, well, she <laughs> offers them a weekend off, and then the professor comes in and says, No time off! <laughs> and Leela <laughs> says... <laughs> Let's mutiny. Um, so, begging the question, were any lessons learned at all? Or, <laughs> But it's a cartoon, and we want it all to be back to... We want it all reset to exactly how it was before. Um, because that's what American audiences need, is the comfort <laughs> of knowing that there are no consequences and everything remains the same. <laughs> Let's be a complete idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're just a floating <laughs> head right now. That was fun. <laughs> um, Latrice, have you ever had like a day job where everyone in the uh, ranks with you was united against a incompetent boss? Because I can think of a couple I've had. Oh, God. Yeah, for sure. I work for the telemarketing firm, which like, you know, it's the worst job ever anyway. Um <laughs> But they had us doing like cold calls and like everybody was like, no, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. If you don't get us some leads, we're, we're walking out. And bitches, oh, it was like we Glenn, hit it. We left. A Glenn, oh, Gary, yeah. Glenn Ross situation. I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> that, that <laughs> word. <laughs> Ross? <laughs> Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross. Is that right? Yeah, but it's not one word. <laughs> how many words is it? Is it five, Glenn, three? Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross is four. I think Glenn Gary is one word. No, it isn't. It's about I two. I think it is. It's about two people named Glenn with different last names. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's true. I've seen a scene from this play in acting class, but that's it. <laughs> Which scene? Do it now. I don't know. Some scene where he's like, get me the leads. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and ask Latrice the, the standard questions. Well, first of all, Latrice, having re, uh, revisited Futurama, do you think you'd be watching more of it now? Do you think you're going to binge Futurama? I, I totally almost just did. Like, <laughs> after watching this episode, I was, it had, you know, Hulu's great. Cause it's just like, next episode, well, let's do this. I'm on the couch, you know? Um uh, to, what, what would you say is your favorite part of Futurama? I, I think it's one of the most well-written shows that was ever on television as far as yeah. comedy. <laughs> I feel like the scenarios are so absolutely ridiculously out of touch, but so <laughs> on point. You know what I mean? Like, how can you, like, be, like, read us like that? Because, <laughs> the, like, the idea of it all is, like, it's based on some truth. Like, yeah. we're living this. We're really living this. But um, it's always easier to swallow when you 
are animated and it's in a cartoon. Mm, so, we're getting sexual we again, I guess. Oh, see, there you go. See, there you go. <laughs> you, you brought that one up, Latrice. That wasn't us. <laughs> Which makes the question... Only if you pay me extra. How many calories are income? Um, so fifteen. <laughs> fifteen. <Really? laughs> oh no! I mean, it's it's protein. It's protein dense, so it's good. Good calories. Yeah, it's like eating raw fish. Fishy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then our our compulsory question for every guest is: of the cast of Futurama, who would you do? Oh. Oh, <laughs> what I do? Oh, oh. Uh, I, I know you're married. If you need to think of it in terms of who would you welcome in as a guest star <laughs> in the bedroom? <laughs> no, Lila, I think is like I like. She's hot though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's hot, even with that one eye. Like that's that's okay. That's all. It's just you know. That's um. That's actually a selling point for me. I, I, I mean, I'm here for it. <laughs> when someone <laughs> when someone has something truly unique, it, it I think it's very attractive. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, she looked like she could fuck like a man. Oh yeah, like she would. Yeah, for sure. Wrap it on, girl. Oh yeah, she's yeah. not afraid to peg. She's a strong. Yeah, she is pegged. <laughs> 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 well, La- Latrice Royale, you have your own podcast. Um, where can our listeners listen to you? You have a show with um, Manila called The Chop. Yes, yes? My, other, <laughs> my other other half uh, is uh, Manila Luzon, and we have The Chop. We have new shows every Tuesday and Thursday, so just wherever you listen to your podcast, tune us in. We do recaps and rundowns and... We do chit chat and talk about <laughs> real life shit and answer fan emails. So yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. Lovely. And um, do you? I mean, we're still pretty much full swing pandemic. Um, do you have any f- future gigs planned? Anything you want to <laughs> plug here? <laughs> very, very sparse. Very f- f- few and far between. Um, I've been picking and choosing. The month of February is pretty much booked up because this is my birthday month, so I'm going to be mm-hmm. celebrating. I'm going to go to Seattle for my actual yeah. birthday. I'll be there because they have a new club. Uh, our place closed, you remember? Yeah, and so really sad. Now the comeback, the comeback is the new place. The it's new called venue. the comeback. So, it's called the comeback. Well, I will go next time I'm in Seattle. So Thanks for letting I us know. I am good. Yeah, I'm going to be the comeback queen, and I'll be there for the grand opening, which is actually my birthday weekend. <gasps> Yay! Um, Everyone yeah, go to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the week after that, I go to Vegas for a week. And so, <laughs> you know, I'll be, you can catch me at Piranha. Um, <laughs> Latrice and I actually met at our place. In yeah. Seattle. That was the first time we met. Um, she had a gig there. I went to say hi. My season had been filmed, but wasn't airing yet, you know. And and word right. gets around the sisterhood. So Latrice didn't know me, but she knew me. And mm-hmm. the, the doors to our place swung open, and she was standing there. And I'm in full drag. She's fully out of drag. And I leapt <laughs> into the air, and, and she, she caught did. me. She caught me and just <laughs> held me there. And I just kind of dangled from Latrice's arms. <laughs> it was so sweet. It was a really, it was a, it was probably my favorite first first meeting of a sister. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> and then, then she came back to my house. Um, I tell this story all the time on stage, so let's get it documented <laughs> somewhere. She yes. Comes, she comes back to my house. Um, we we lay out a, a, a snack buffet. Everyone's, um, you know, picking at waffle sundaes and nachos and stuff. And then <laughs> I smoke Latrice out with my volcano vaporizer. So a little of my Seattle weed and the bag fills with, you know, uh, a respectable cloud of smoke. Latrice takes it and... <gasps> Takes the whole bag in I one mean, go. Number <laughs> professional. Then, <laughs> then she pulls out um, the the skunkiest, stickiest weed I've ever seen. It broke my grinder trying to grind it. <laughs> we put it in the vaporizer, and the bag. And I'm not joking. The bag fills with like a yellow 
thick, opaque smoke. <laughs> and I took the tiniest hit off of it. And to this day, the only thing that's ever gotten me more stoned than Latrice's weed is um, <laughs> uh, edibles. Latrice's weed, weed is on par with like eating too many edibles. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> what we do. What we do. I that... can't wait to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just clear a week from my schedule just because know that I'm... you're going to be down for the count <laughs> yeah. for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being our guest today, Latrice, and thank every uh, thank everyone. Thank every thanks to everyone. <laughs> 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 for listening to this episode of I'm 40% Podcast. Um, we'll be back next Monday with episode seven of season two of Futurama. And uh, I wish you all a futuristic day. <laughs> no, no, mom. So cheesy. We're gonna work, we're, we'll workshop it. <laughs> Thank you, Latrice. Bye. <laughs> You're so welcome. Bye. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,